HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. HCAM News is live every Thursday from 6.30 until 7 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh gives an update on schools reopening the Hopkinton Lions Club talks about an upcoming event to educate about diabetes and Hopkinton High School Athletic Director Rich Cormier joined us to talk about the spring season, which officially got underway this week. But first, the Hopkinton Women's Club hosted their annual Meet the Candidates Night. The Hopkinton Women's Club hosted their annual Meet the Candidates Night. This year, the event was held virtually. Right now, we'll meet the candidates from the only contested race in this year's town election, the school committee candidates. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much to the Hopkins Women's Club and to HCAM for hosting this event. And thank you to all the candidates. I'm always inspired by um, everyone who steps up to serve. So thank you for coming tonight. Um, my name is Amanda Fargiano, and I've been, I'm running for re-election to the Hopkinton School Committee. It's been both an honor and a huge responsibility to serve our high performing district of nearly 4,000 students and about 400 educators and staff. Um, and we're rated among the best in the nation and in the state. So for the past year, I served as chair, helping to steer the committee through the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic and all of that entailed. In addition, I helped lead successful contract negotiations with our superintendent and with our Hopkinton Teachers Association. To expand the support network for our school committee, I created a monthly school committee chair round table with area colleagues. Um, and it's been a great opportunity to ex exchange best practices and concerns and so forth. Behind the scenes, I work to model sound and effective processes for the committee, and I've invested in growing our institutional knowledge. As chair, I've also tried to be responsive to the community communications while staying true to the voice of the committee. In service to the committee, I've worked hard to maintain space for transparent discussion and debate among members and to allow for individual voices in our deliberation. As we emerge from the pandemic, the district is facing a pivotal time. We need both tactical near-term actions and strategic long-range planning to ensure responsible and efficient use of taxpayer dollars to support our growing student body and the evolving needs uh, of our first-rate education. My priorities are assessing and mitigating the pandemic impacts, continuing to improve mental health and school climate for all students, continuing to identify and eliminate conscious and unconscious bias and racism, addressing growing enrollment while strategically improving campus infrastructure, maintaining and furthering the excellence in academics, and developing budgets that are reflective of our, of our collective town and district priorities. After three years, I feel like I'm just getting started. With all that is ahead of us, I believe experience and continuity are critical, and I would be grateful for your vote on May 22nd. Good evening. My name is Jared Prey, and I'm running for a seat on the school committee. Our school system is a source of pride for all of us in Hopkinton and a reason why many of us moved to town. I'll work to keep it that way. I've lived in Hopkinton for 16 years with my wife, Jessica, and three children. Two are currently in Hopkinton schools, a kindergartner and a third grader, and our third is just over a year old and will be in the Hopkinton High School class of 2038. I actually did the math. I therefore have a strong vested interest in maintaining our excellent school system now and ensuring it remains that way for many years to come. After growing up in Massachusetts, I received my undergraduate degree from Bucknell University, a master's from Dartmouth College, and an MBA from Bentley University. I'm currently head of market access for a small rare disease drug company in Boston. This district is at an inflection point. I believe my background and experience uniquely positioned me to help the district addressed the most immediate challenges that we face, including to continue to navigate the challenges presented by COVID, along with the considerable impact that remote learning has had on all learners. I believe that the best place for our children to learn is in the classroom. With the recent and projected enrollment growth, we also must aggressively plan for future space needs. The MSBA's acceptance of Elmwood School into a period of eligibility is, is an exciting first step. 
Investment by the community combined with strong leadership has made this a top 10 district in Massachusetts. The next school committee must commit to maintaining the, stand, the current standard of excellence in the face of financial headwinds. The attributes that have served me well throughout my career, the ability to synthesize and listen to competing opinions or data, yet move decisively, to think strategically and plan for the future, yet pivot as the situation necessitates, has prepared me for this role. My wife and I are both the children of public school teachers and both grew up going to public schools. We chose to move to Hopkinton on the strength of our schools and now with three young children, we remain heavily invested in our school system. With my background and experience, along with my own passion for excellence in the school district, I, I hope to earn your vote on May 22nd. Thank you. Thank you to HCAM and to the Hopkinton Women's Club for providing the town with this occasion. Um, I'm Meg Tyler. I've lived in Hopkinton for 16 years with my husband. We have two children. By day, I am a professor of humanities at Boston University where I teach ethics. And I also run the poetry series. Um, by night, and it's mostly been by night, I have been on the school committee for the past three years, working almost always doggedly in the company of really excellent volunteers, administrators, and educators, as well as in the company of the other town leaders. Um, I love thinking about education. That's why I'm here. I love thinking about what most benefits the individual student no matter what their background, no matter what their interest. I think primarily as school committee members, that's what we're here to do, to think about the success and the well-being of each individual child, which is taken into our care. Um, it's also important that we support the teachers, that we support the parents, and we support the community. Um, it goes without saying that it's been a really hard year it's been really tough on all sorts of levels. Um, but I think that by acting consistently and by persevering and continuing to support the administration, because we're still in the middle of a crisis, that, that we will forge ahead and I think things will, will come out quite well. We do have challenges ahead as the other candidates have said. Um, we have a growing population. We need to enlarge our facilities. Um, I think it's also worth noting that we spend on average in our town $1,000 less per student than most districts in Massachusetts or, or than the average district in Massachusetts. And yet we provide them with a stellar education. So there are a lot of great things in place here. Um, I'm also very concerned with expanding and enhancing our awareness of equity and diversity. And I think that equity concerns not just people uh, of different backgrounds, but including neurodiversity too. Um, I hope that I will be witness to some developments in our hiring practices, because I think that it would be great if we could have a more diverse faculty um, to reflect our student body. Um, and, and I hope that will come with time and I will support those changes. So I'd be grateful for your vote on May 22nd and I'm very honored to be serving the town. Thank you. Don't forget the school committee town election debates will take place on Tuesday, May 4th at 7 p.m. live on HCAM. School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh was recently featured on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program to talk about the full reopening of schools. Here's a look. We had some big rocks, right? I think when we, when we started that process, we kept thinking, how will we ever do lunch? And I think people who watch school committee meetings week after week, we would say, I just don't have any idea how we're going to be able to have 900 middle school kids, for example, eat lunch or 1200 high school kids eat lunch. And it was, it was a, a very strange phenomenon. We kept thinking, all right, so you can have three lunch periods or four lunch periods or five lunch, how many do you need? And counted up all those desks that were in the gym and then the ones in the cafeteria and the hot lunch and cold lunch. and. And then at some point, someone said, well, I know that we're not allowed to eat in the auditorium, but if we could do that, we could make it work. 
And I, I mean, this is kind of funny. Retrospectively, I don't know if people remember when every day we'd send home another question like, how would you feel if your kid ate lunch on a beach towel? You might. <laughs> and I know people must have thought we were crazy, but we were really working through all of those kinds of procedures. So lunch was outrageous. And then we were very lucky that recently the, the guidance on school buses was relaxed. So now we can put, you know, a, a child on every bench. We can, I mean, we, there's no real rules. I mean, we can put, we can fill up those buses with two kids on every seat. What we're trying to do is put one child on every bench. And, you know, in the event that we can leave space between them, we do. Um, but yeah, I mean, the bus seats are now numbered. So we knew who, know who sat where going to school and from school, the kids scan a card. So we know what time you got in, what time you got off. All of that had to sort of be logistically resolved before we could make this happen. In addition to thousands of pieces of furniture moving um, on the Friday before vacation, uh, we knew that the custodial staff in the middle school and high school were starting that work. And I can remember being in the middle school and having you know, one of the custodians come to Ann Van Benick saying, I can't fit that last desk in that classroom. No, not, not at three feet from side of seat to side of seat. I, I can't get it in there. And you know, those were the kinds of things that have just been so challenging. Right. And I, I, I know, I remember when you started talking about lunch and that was by far uh, the biggest thing. Were you able to figure out lunch in the absence of outdoor space in case it was rainy or did you need to include outdoor space and provide tents or something like that? Well, to be fair, um, at the high school, that's gonna be the trickiest place. We're very lucky that 130 kids, about 130, have um, stepped away to do senior project. So that alleviates, you know, 10% of the population, maybe a little more than 10% of the population. And we do have junior and senior privileges. So those kids can go out, get in a car and go get lunch somewhere. Um, and so that's also helpful. There's outdoor seating on nice days. So like today, if you weren't too cold, you could sit outside and have lunch there. But we really are at the high school relying on kids not eating lunch inside the physical building. You know, whether that's because you've taken your privileges or you've gone outside to eat, you know, either in the open air or under a tent, um, but at the high school, we've had to make those choices. We are going to take a time out, but a whole lot more ahead on this edition of HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Lions Club was recently featured on our Hangout Hour program. They talked about an upcoming program to educate about diabetes. The Hopkinton Lions Club was recently featured on the Hangout Hour to talk about their upcoming Diabetes Awareness Forum. You know, uh, we have this uh, forum coming up on May 12th at 6 o'clock. And this will be, of course, uh, Zoom and uh, platform will be virtual. And uh, we have basically, you know, in this, uh, uh, in this forum, uh, the experts will be talking about how to control and manage diabetes. They will talk about diet exercise. They will also talk about some of the side effects to prevent them, like cardiac, diabetic retinopathy, or kidneys. And we have, you know, also a, the feature, you know, those experts, uh, one is Karen, Guru Poso, she is a nurse and she is a, also a diabetes education coordinator at Milford Hospital. We also have one of the featured speakers is Kim Minio, and she has also written a book about nutrition. And she has also been at the Dana Farber Cancer Institute, Boston Medical Center, Newton Wellesley Hospitals. She has worked in all, all these places. And she's going to talk about the diet. And uh, Dr. Stephen Perryman is uh, an OD, he's a Hopkinton Vision Center, and he's going to talk about the 
side effects, you know, the diabetes lead to with the eyes or with the cardiac or with the kidneys or the health. So we have a, a team of experts who are basically handling diabetes from all angles, you know, exercise, diet, as well as, you know, the side effects and how to prevent and control the diabetes. Right. Wow. That is, uh, that is quite a distinguished panel, as, as they say. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge on that panel. But that's now, what, you know, I, we basically had, uh, you know, been contacting with this team and finally we were able to put it together and uh, in this environment, you know, with the virtual and we got some featured speakers, you know, to talk about it. Right. That's great. So May 12th, that's a Wednesday evening. Um, yeah. Thank you. About three weeks from tonight. Now, what, what would you say, is this um, informational forum geared towards people who have diabetes or people to be aware of um, if they may be at risk of diabetes or anybody or what, what are you thinking? It can actually, you know, uh, you mentioned it, it can be, you know, for the one who have the diabetes because they can better manage and control their diabetes, you know? Okay. And also it will make you aware of some people who are kind of pre-diabetes, you know? Yeah. And it will kind of help them to have some knowledge about it so that they do not, you know, basically eat too much sugar or so you know how much they can control with their diet and how much they can control with the exercise, you know? Right. It will be helpful basically, you know, for both the people who have diabetes as well as the people who are kind of pre-diabetes or who don't have it, you know? And to prevent. Yeah. Right. I think that's really awesome. In my life, I've been fortunate enough, I've had examples on both ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. where um, someone I know took care of themselves and another person tried to ignore that they had diabetes and they had radically different outcomes. Exactly. And, you know, one of the things I say kind of like having, you know, diabetes is kind of like, it's a lifestyle and it's actually a healthy lifestyle. You know, you got to be a little bit more aware of what's going on, but you can take care of yourself and you can really, um, you can really do well for a long time with it. Yeah. I, I had diabetes actually for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And it's basically managing and controlling the diabetes. You know? yeah. yeah. So how do you, so just a quick aside, uh, just a quick aside, Deanne. What's the difference between 30 years ago and now for you managing diabetes? Well, I think uh, the main difference is that when you initially get it, then you are kind of, you know, like uh, in somewhat, you know, shock and you want to do it, you are more serious about it. But as you progress, you know, although you should, you know, maintain the diet and exercise and the medication, you have that routine. So, but over the years also, you you are not as strict as what you are in the beginning, you know? Okay. And you still want to lead your life, you know? And sometimes, you know, you can have, you know, maybe you have to be still very careful that when you are eating especially sugar or the sweets, you know? And yeah. I love sweets, you know? So it is very <laughs> difficult and it's very tempting, you know? But no. you still have to kind of uh, control it. And actually, then you have the family, you know, my daughters and my wife, actually, they control me, you know. Yeah. And they tell me, hey, listen, no, 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 don't eat too much cake, you know. <laughs> Give me a bite. They say, okay, you can have a bite, you know. Yeah. So that you are not missing too much and have a little bit of that, you know. Right. But right. It's a, family plays a lot of part on this, you know. Yes. Yeah, that's a really... That's a very important point. Hopkinton High School Athletic Director Rich Cormier recently joined us on our program HCAM Sports Talk Live, which of course you can catch every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to talk about the upcoming spring season. So you made it through winter, you made it through fall two, well you made it through fall one as well earlier on, and now we got the spring coming up. How's everything going? How'd the planning go? Are we ready to rock next week? Uh, well, we started. We're, we're underway right now. Um, so our first day of tryouts was uh, was Monday. So we have over 500 student athletes uh, participating, um, which is awesome. If you think of, you know, just a year ago, right, where we were a year ago. So uh, it's just great to have so many kids participating 
Um, you know, there's obviously some unusual additions to the spring season with, uh, for us, wrestling and cheer uh, being um, competed um, this particular season. Uh, we're still waiting on the modifications with wrestling, uh, but we have started our practices. Um, and then once we get those modifications, we'll be able to put together a full schedule and figure out what a meet's going to look like. And, you know, so some of those details we're still waiting on, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, things are going great. You know, I, I, you know, from everything I've seen, the kids are certainly excited. And I think there's a, you know, sort of a special place for, that I think everybody has for the spring athletes um, in terms of what they lost last year. Um, when you really think about it, 50% of the students we have playing spring sports right now, we're in middle school. The last time we had a spring season, um, you know, and your, your senior class was sophomores. You know, you, you don't really have returning players per se this year. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things that you don't really think about um, when you lose a season. Um, there's, there's a real trickle down um, impact, you know, in terms of tryouts, um, in terms of, you know, Coaches haven't seen these uh, these students in a long time, uh, right. at least not in this capacity. And so, I mean, think of how much any player grows from their ninth grade year to the eleventh grade year, the tenth grade to the twelfth. I mean, that's a huge, huge difference. And uh, you know, so I think that's a challenge that our coaches are dealing with right now and trying to evaluate during the trial process. But but again, I think we'd all prefer this over over what we had last year. So. Absolutely. The spring season, pretty much a full slate of games and we'll have playoffs as well. You'll have the uh, sectionals, you'll have the States. So it'll be a pretty normal season, obviously a little cramped uh, more than usual. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, despite the fact that uh, there's a lot of players we didn't see uh, last year it is all going well with the tryout so far. Yeah, so far things have been great. Um, the coaches have been great. The, the student athletes have been great. Um, you know, we got some, you know, uh, inclement weather coming in, unfortunately, but but so far the first few days have gone really, really well. Um, you know, and Tom, you mentioned this will be our first time out of the four seasons that we're going to play a full slate of games. And, and I say full, right? We're still not playing 20 games because we don't have quite enough time to play 20, but we're doing the full TVL schedule. For those of you that so for those of you that may not know, it's we play everyone in the large twice and all of the crossovers. Uh, we've mostly just been staying within the large. Um, besides, you know, maybe some crossover games just to fill in the schedule when you lose an opponent due to quarantines and things like that. Um, and then in the fall, obviously, we just did pods, totally based on geography. So this is really the first time we're kind of back to that sense of uh, a normal TVL schedule, um, and we do have a couple non leagues. Um, we're not opposed to playing non-leagues. It wasn't, it was more that we just didn't have any place to put them right. <laughs> in our schedule. Um, the MIAA only allows you to play three games a week unless you have to reschedule due to weather. Um, so we already had Monday, Wednesday, Friday, almost every week. Um, and so as a result, we really didn't have much room to, to add um, besides a couple things here and there. The Hopkinton Middle School football team recently recognized their teammate, Andrew Cooper, who was injured during the season. Here's a look. So it was Hopkinton Middle School's uh, final scrimmage of the season. All the kids had been working really, really hard. Andrew's a multi-sport athlete and it was really important for him to play in the last football scrimmage of the year. And it was probably his best run of the year. He broke it out to the left, uh, eluded like two tacklers. And then as he was being tackled, he suffered a pretty decent uh, ankle injury. And luckily, you know, we have great responders, not only the parents that were in attendance there, but our athletic trainer was immediately on the scene, as well as first responders from uh, Hopkinton EMS. And really, they were in and out of there with Andrew in about 15 minutes. It, you know, and I'm sure to Andrew and for us as coaches and parents, it felt like an eternity, but it was just such an amazing response. Andrew's about as tough as they come. He was still joking around a little bit. And from what I hear, he's getting the best attention he can possibly get. And we can't wait to have him back. Today was our uniform return day, but more importantly, 
the parents and the kids reached out to me. They wanted to do something special for Andrew. And so they all came down. And what they did was they signed a football here with some well wishes. And in the back, you can probably hear some of the chatter. They're all signing a card. And the number of kids who were just jumping uh, for the opportunity to say something nice to their teammate was unreal. And that's really what our football team is about, is community, family, and commitment to one another. And I mean, nothing proves that more th uh, than today. Andrew, my man. Um, I can't tell you how much it broke your coaching staff's heart for your season to end the way it did. And that's because of everything you've given us this season. You're a part of what we are. You're a part of this community. And we wouldn't be the same team without you. So we can't wait to have you back. I know this isn't a, you know, as much as we wish we could do for you, but we hope that it's something. And you're a strong kid. You're going to be back better than ever in the fall. Best of luck to you. I hope you have a great summer, and I'll see you around. You're a champ, Andrew. Here's a look at the upcoming Hopkinton Hillers spring season broadcast starting next week. On a Wednesday, May 5th at 3.45 p.m., we have Hillers baseball as well as Hillers softball versus Ashland. You can catch the games on our HCAM channels as well as our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. On Thursday, May 6th at 4 p.m., Hillers Boys Lacrosse takes on Ashland. Then on Monday, May 10th at 3.45 p.m., Hillers Girls Lacrosse takes on Westwood and we'll have Hillers Baseball and Softball versus Medfield. The Marathon Fund Committee is awarding 10 $1,000 scholarships to graduating high school seniors who are residents of Hopkinton. Applications are now available at the select board at town manager's office in the town hall, the guidance department at Hopkinton High School on the town website at hopkintonma.gov or by calling the select board town manager's office at 508-497-9701. Upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. You can check out all the upcoming events at the HCA at their website, hopartscenter.org. But a couple of the upcoming events include on May 1st, Art Around the World, Japan, and on May 9th, the Claflin Hill Mother's Day Jazz Brunch Concert. Find more information at hopartscenter.org. EHOP is going to host their annual Know Your Vote program in preparation for next Saturday's annual town meeting. The Know Your Vote program will take place Monday, May 3rd at 7 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Uh, residents are invited to submit questions before or during the forum by email at knowyourvote at ehop.org via Facebook or Twitter or by commenting on the YouTube live stream. And of course, the annual town meeting will take place on Saturday, uh, May 9th at Hopkinton High School. HCAM was out on the town common early to grab shots of the Hopkinton Running Club for an upcoming marathon documentary. This photo was submitted to us by Karen Webb, and it is your picture of the week. Upcoming town government meetings include on Tuesday, May 4th at 5.30 p.m. We'll have the Board of Assessors meeting on HCAM TV. On Thursday, May 6th at 7 p.m., we'll have the school committee meeting. And on HCAM TV on Saturday, May 8th at 9 a.m., we'll have the annual town meeting live on HCAM. And of course, you can check out all the upcoming town government meetings at hopkintonma.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry, next Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we will be back. As always, we thank you for tuning in. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.